one of my best friends and I, we have invented a device to prove that function programming is super fun, very easy, and it is not what you might think. Together, we will program this animation on such a device in just 50 lines of code. And I can understand you to say, oh my God, where can I buy that thing? I really want such a thing and I need such a thing. And you're, you're right. But I tell you, uh, watch the video until the end. And then I show what you can do in order to get such a wonderful device. Until then, because this is a hands-on video, you can use our simulator and you can replay everything that I show you here. Or you can play around and invent your own pixel apps until you have the real deal. That's it. It's very easy. Everyone can do it. So just remember, we wanted to have that animation that you see here. And so we divide it into different steps and step by step we achieve the final result. So the first thing that we are doing is we draw a static background. The code for the background is this. So what does it tell us? So it says, we define a computation. It's inside of this white thing. And inside of that computation, it says, draw a background is that BG function and we pass a brush on that case, a color to it. And then we would like to evaluate that computation exactly one time. It's this eval.plot. And what happens is the computation is evaluated, is calculated. And basically what comes out is a 24 by 24 color array that then is sent to the device or to your simulator. That's it. Very easy. So next step, we have to draw a thin centered circle. That's also quite easy and the code looks like this. So we just use the circle function and pass some parameters to it. But there's also another building block, a new building block, and it's the get context function. And the context that is returned, it gives us access to several things like the current time, the current cycle count, the width and the height of the canvas. And it gives us even access to a low level drawing canvas, which in our case is a skier. It's Google's 2D graphics library that is also used in Chrome, Firefox, Android and Flutter and so on. The context in our case is not super important, but it shows us an important concept that we need to understand. And the concept is magic functions. Get context is a kind of magic function. And you see that because its returning value is bound by using let bang. It's this let exclamation mark instead of just let. But maybe if you have asked yourself, wait, if get context is a pure function and it cannot access any static data, how can it return a context object that has access to all the stuff that I just told. And that's a good question. Get context somehow gets the context value from here, from this white thing. And it gives us back to us. And that's the magic. And even though we do not understand how it can retrieve the context from there, we just accept that. We accept that there's some magic happening and that we can make use of it. And there's even more magic happening when it comes to state and handling state, and we will make use of this magic too. So when we write our user code on that layer of abstraction, we almost see nothing about that magic facts, about that magic going on. It just happens and something else takes care of it. So it's like in a theater play. You know? They are two layers. So the first, the first layer is the on stage layer. And the second layer is the behind the scenes layer. And in this video, we care about the on stage layer. We are in the role of a writer or of a director. And we say what shall happen. And we just accept that there's a machinery behind the scenes that supports us and takes care of everything we need. So what shall happen in the next thing? I like to move it, move it. Yeah, you get it. It's motion. So motion is values changing over time that affect some display properties. So in our case, one thing that we would like to animate. So one property is the angle of that spinning arc. So here's the spinning arc. Yeah. And how can we achieve that? So first thing we have to draw the arc. So the arc spans a rectangle, which is off screen because we would like to have the whole 
screen filled by the arc when it's spinning and not just a circle. So we paint it off screen. This is a static arc. It has a static angle. Nothing is moving. And how can we get it spinning now? So we need some motion. So let's program some motion. So motion was display values changing over time. That means we need values from past evaluation cycles in order to calculate the next value. So that means we have to preserve something from one cycle to another. And how can we do that in a most convenient way? So just a spoiler, we do not use objects for that. And why not? And you might say, how can it even be possible not to use objects for that? And we can find some properties for an object. And this is the object. It is an identity represented by an absolute address, a location in memory, a pointer. Yeah? And it hides mutable data by behavior. And as a consequence, an instance has to be created upfront before it can be evaluated and used. And this is uncomfortable because it's a delocalization between instantiation and usage. Yeah? And it's also error prone because it can happen that in one evaluation cycle, accidentally, um, that object is evaluated multiple times, yeah? which we do not want. What do we want to achieve? We would like to have some object-like thing that we can just use in place. But yet these blocks, which can be used everywhere, retain their own local state. And you might know this idea, for example, from React or Svelte, uh, where it is really like you can use your React elements in place, even if they retain their own state. So back to the program. The motion property is the angle of the arc, and that value should change over time. To achieve that, we only have to make three small adaptions or additions to the code we already have. So the first thing is, instead of a constant, we need something variable. Yeah? So we have replaced the constant, the angle, by use state. And that enables us to change and preserve a value between evaluations. Second changing that value. We have to increment the angle, in our case by 8 degrees per cycle, so which just feels good for the frame rate that we have. And that leads to the third thing, that is we need an animation loop. So we heard a lot of the word evaluation cycle for a few times now, and that is until now, we only have had that eval.plot, which means evaluate the whole computation exactly one time. But that's not enough if we want to have an animation. So we have to do that a lot of times. We have to evaluate, so to calculate yeah, our frame and then do that again and again, over and over again. And in our case, we do that currently with a frame rate of 50, 50 hertz. Yeah? So 50 times in a second results in 50 frames per second. Our whole computation retains the state for the next cycle. This is a very important thing and it feels very natural here. So we have created an animation. And how does it look like? Yeah, that already looks okay, but we have missed uh, one certain detail because we said we want to have 360 degrees, so one, one cycle spinning in exactly one second. And we could, of course, now calculate with the frame rate that we know, but there's an alternative which makes us life much easier. We can just use the anim.linear function that is built for exactly that purpose for animation. You specify a duration that is just one second and you say the animation should start at zero degrees yeah? and it should end at 360 degrees and it should, you know, when it has reached the end, just start from the beginning. So it should be a loop. So we don't have to care about frame it and all that stuff. But there's also another advantage and it is the animation that we can access here. It has a lot of information, but we can also control it in an imperative way. And this is what we will make use of now. Still, we need our number counting down. Yeah? For that countdown, we need the remaining seconds that we have to decrement. 
And the countdown basically should look like this. So we enhanced our current computation with a function that just emits a text. This is very easy. There's the text function. We just pass some parameters like position and the text value to it. And it renders the text in our case that number three. Now we want to animate the text and we want to do it according to these rules. The countdown shall start at a predefined number and use it as a text to display. In the moment when the spinning animation reaches or crosses the end line, the countdown shall be decremented by one. We can now encode these rules in a very easy way, just step by step. So again, for the remaining seconds, we utilize useState, which we initialize with a duration and that we decrement later. The value of the remaining seconds is then passed to our text function. Now we need to understand if our angle has reached its end. So to make sure that this happens in only exactly one evaluation cycle, we make use of the trigger.force to true function that we pass the is at end value of our angle animation. And that means even if is at end should stay for several cycles, the trigger.force to true emits only one impulse for exactly one cycle when the value goes from false to true, the input value. And then we say, if the end of the angle animation has reached or crossed, then we decrement the remaining seconds by one. So let's have a look at it. Two, one, zero, and of course, it's decrementing uh, until there's no tomorrow. So what we have done here is we mixed imperative and functional programming in a very powerful way. So you often might think that in functional programming languages, it is not possible to encode such rules in, in such a way in this if then that thing and so on. But this is just not true. So because most modern languages, so they are function oriented languages, but you can have imperative constructs, you can have mutable values, but all in a very concise and clean way. Okay, we are almost there at the final result, but there's one thing left. And it is, when the whole countdown is finished, we should start the plant rising animation. <laughs> and so this will bring us to the next concept, which is components and composability. Let's hear the sentence again. When the whole countdown has finished, it says something about the whole countdown. Yeah. So let's make a component out of our countdown. This can be achieved with a very small refactoring. So our countdown component is just a function that takes the duration and that function returns now a value that indicates whether the whole countdown is finished or not. We can then build another component for displaying the plant rising animation. And now we can compose all these components to implement the final animation. That final animation is of course also a component that we can use to yeah, evaluate and show it to the frame. And this is exactly what I'm doing right now. So I select all the stuff, I press Alt Enter and here we go. This is our countdown. When the countdown has finished, which is now, the plant is rising and that's it. Now you've just got a taste how easy and fun it is to program such a pixel device. And of course you say now you want your own and I can perfectly understand that. And I promised you that I help you to get one. And the thing is, so currently we are engineering from the ground up that thing and we are trying to get all the certificates, the CE stuff and so on. We want to launch a Kickstarter or Indiegogo campaign. And the thing is, for that we really need your help because, you know, we need backers for that campaign from day one. And you can help us, you know, you can just spread this video. Yeah, you, you know, you can make a lot of noise on Twitter or on whatever Instagram kind of social channel, you know, you know that much better than me. We have paired with, with cool artists and people who can tell stories and who have ideas on, on apps and, and all that kind of stuff that you can use this thing. You will be able to use it for your home automation, you know, for Zigbee automation. You will just be able to write these 
these things that we just did for for pixel animations you can just encode your own rules yeah you know you can say i don't know if my freezer is open and my light is off then uh, i don't make an alarm that all my neighbors understand something's wrong yeah <laughs> something like that help us make some noise you know spread the love across all channels you know just tell it your grandma or whatever this is this is all perfectly fine and you can contact us you know you can for example contact myself here on youtube just reach out if you have, uh, I don't know, um, a bunch of money that you want to throw on us, for example. <laughs> we are doing a lot to, to make this wonderful pixel clock that frame a reality for all of us. And I hope you really liked and enjoyed that. And um, there's much stuff, there's a lot of stuff coming up. And uh, just stay tuned. And uh, I'm curious where all this is going. Thank you very much. I love you and I'm out.